Hello and welcome to another Beast PC video. Today we're going to add in a Beast PC vlog aspect as well. Six years ago in 2014, Intel released the Pentium G3258 to commemorate 20 years of the Pentium brand name. It was a properly great budget choice at the time since it had a $72 price tag at launch, and today it costs less than $20 used, so we'll investigate if the CPU is still worth buying. First, the specs. It's built on an updated Haswell architecture and its 22 nanometer process, and features two cores and two threads, a properly budget CPU. Out of the box, it was clocked at 3.2 GHz, and it features 4th generation Intel HD graphics, and all of this is wrapped up in a TDP of 53 watts. But we're missing the most important aspect of the CPU. It has an unlocked multiplier for overclocking, something really exciting for us. Of course, we're going to overclock it today. Our test motherboard is a Gigabyte B85MD3H, a very standard 1150 board with no frills and a 4-phase VRM, all of which power the Haswell chip's fully integrated voltage regulator found inside the CPU, from which the voltages for the CPU cores, iGPU, memory controller, etc. are all distributed, so the 4-phase VRM should be sufficient. We're also testing with 16GB of dual-channel DDR3 RAM, which speeds we'll discuss later. And since we're overclocking this chip to the limit, we'll install our trusty Noctua NHD15S cooler. And rounding off the test system is the RX 560 you're all familiar with, and everything was installed on SSD storage. Let's start with the stock game results before overclocking. GTA 5 at the 1080p high settings was a struggle for this CPU. We had to limit the FPS to 40 in order to eliminate huge stuttering, and even so there were problems with textures loading. The GPU here really isn't trying much. CSGO at 1080p high fared better, it gave it a playable FPS of 83. However, do notice that this is drastically lower than the same Haswell i5-4460 we tested before. So the games aren't doing too well. What about the CPU's other uses? It's a very good candidate for home server use, so we tested YouTube watching in Chrome using the iGPU, which doesn't support much video decoding at all. 1080p60 and 1440p60 FPS footage all went okay, but 4K60 became a struggle, dropping frames every so often. But how about overclocking? Let's obtain a Cinebench score first. The CPU did just over 240 multi-core at stock. Now let's cue the overclocking montage.
Finally, after a bit of fiddling, we got the CPU pretty stable at 4.6GHz core at 1.375V and the Uncore or cache at 3.4GHz with a 1.1V ring voltage. The G3258 is known to vary wildly in bin quality, some do 4.3, some do 4.7 at low voltages, and mine is perhaps a small bit better than average. Memory was at 1400CL8 and it was capped there for some reason, but we could tune the timings a little bit. Anyways, this all yielded a Cinebench score of 340 or so, a 40% increase for a 43% core frequency boost, not bad at all. Single core was 176, a very strong result, although Haswell's IPC does lag behind Skylake and Coffee Lake. Now let's get into the game benchmarks again. GTA 5 still needed to be limited to 40 FPS, but the textures had no problems loading this time. There was still the very occasional frame drop, but overall the experience was quite good for 40 FPS. Intense physics scenes really tanked the FPS and the frame drops became far more common, and the average dipped down to 32. We turned the overclock down just a bit now to 4.5 core and 3.2 cache, so CSGO and the later games would stabilize. CSGO's FPS did increase substantially to 107, a big 28% jump just by overclocking, super impressive. Fortnite now at the 1080p high preset it ran at 45 FPS average, a tiny bit stuttery but still quite playable, however the CPU is definitely bottlenecking the GPU. Moving on to the more demanding games, Far Cry 5 really eats CPU in the benchmark and it was a struggle, giving only 22 FPS at the ultra settings and the CPU sat at 100% usage. For comparison, without a CPU bottleneck, the same GPU could do over 32 FPS average. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has a reputation of not working on a lot of hardware for us, but we didn't expect it to be this bad. The CPU could not launch the game for a solid 4 minutes and froze very hard. We had to control alt delete for a whole minute to get out, and so we'll call that a big fail. So as you could tell by now, this CPU is really struggling. Its days as a gaming CPU have come to an end. The only game it could give over 60 FPS with was CSGO. It's even starting to struggle as we demonstrated with more mundane things like high resolution video watching. But let's all keep in mind, the CPU was released 6 years ago as a low-end CPU. It was not designed to age many years. Yet, this thing is still fine for very casual office, video watching, or even a Minecraft PC. And it's a lot, a lot of fun to mess around with. You could overclock on pretty much all 1150 boards since the motherboard vendors unlocked them. And this CPU is worth less than 20 bucks, so if you blow it up, it's not a big deal. So, far in the future, we might release a more extreme overclocking video with this exact chip. Stay tuned, and that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and please consider subscribing. See you next time.